So since we're still dealing with chronic high unemployment, does that mean we have to automatically talk about raising the minimum wage? Should we be talking about both? Or should we just fixate on Obamacare? Let's talk about that next on Get Right with Lenny McAllister, starting right now. Get Right with Lenny McAllister. You two are just dumber than a bag of hammers. The way we help bring back America and we build the bridges and bring people together is by making sure we hold everybody accountable in a 360 fashion. So let me close with this. Yes, there is a change that we can believe in, but it will never come from a politician or a government program. We did not buy citizen standing here in the land of Lincoln. So Carbondale and Elgin, in which collectively we got to move away from the American Idol soundbite nature of politics and back to the American statesman of humble servant leadership that we used to see in politics. It is time to roll out the era of the new, educated, engaged, and energized American citizens. I go to the jail ministry. I speak to the kids in the streets. So I'm never going to lay down being a conservative just as much as I'll never lay down being a proud African American. Welcome to the Hump Day edition of Get Right with Lenny McAllister. You know the drill. We're basically eight days out of Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving dinner and all that other jazz. But in the meanwhile, got some wonderful things to talk to you about. So, as I was just previously saying, you know the drill. On Twitter, it's L E N N Y M C A L L I S T E R. On Facebook, it's tinyurl.com slash L E N N Y P A for the P A native G E. Want to obviously get your feedback, get your feel, see what you're thinking about the news of the day. And there are plenty of plenty of things to talk about. Not I don't really want to dive into a little bit of everything, because right now it's getting a little bit into pop politics, a little bit into who can sling more mud? I don't really want to do that today. I, I know about the um, I know about the arrest of the congressman from Florida, the Republican that voted for welfare recipients to receive drug testing while he was doing cocaine. I'm not going to get into that because that takes us down the mud slinging path. I mean, I think some of that is self explanatory, and I'll leave it. B, which is why I wanted to talk about something a little different, which goes into this whole, I don't know if it's a political spin, I guess that's what I want to talk about today, I don't know if it's a political spin in regards to talking about raising minimum wage at a time where we can't create better jobs in the American economy. There are some, and again, I want your feedback, you know the drill, Twitter or Facebook, there are some that will cynically say that the whole reason why we have to talk about raising the minimum wage is because, quite simply, the only types of jobs that are coming back into the American economy are minimum wage type of jobs. Shift work. Not a lot of money. Can't buy a house. Can't buy a new car. Might not be able to buy yourself a new pair of pants with it, but you can eat at McDonald's on the money that you're making at around, I don't know, 29 hours a week because anything over 29 <laughs> makes the employer in a year have to pay for your health insurance. So there are those that would, with some of the cynicism I added in there for flavor and for accent, would say that, of course, you got to raise minimum wage because these are the only type of jobs that are available to the American public moving forward. This is the new normal. Now, there are some on the other side of this argument that would simply say, well, you know, let, let's just be honest. Let's just be fair. When you look at how wages have grown for the top 1% of the nation, and some of the numbers are whoring, where the top 1%, they're doing well. Wall Street is, is hitting record numbers on a regular basis, and the median wage is not going up. The things for the everyday American are not improving, haven't been improving for a while, and that would probably include minimum wage. Which, in fact, if you look at the numbers and you adjust it for inflation, it hasn't gone up in quite some time. So maybe there's an argument to be made about raising minimum wage. And for those that think that this is a political spin, for me, I think we should be actually looking at both. I don't think that the focus, from a primary perspective, needs to be on raising the minimum wage. Because I think that if we get locked into that mindset, 
you're going to believe on a national basis, quite the same way they do in states such as Illinois, and I think even California, that by raising minimum wage, you're going to make it a livable wage. Raising minimum wage is not making it a, minim, a, a, a livable wage. In fact, raising minimum wage oftentimes inhibits opportunities for people to have better jobs. And I've said this previously, whether it was as a candidate or as a pundit. You don't just need entry-level positions. You need the secondary positions, the tertiary positions. You need careers, not just jobs. If raising minimum wage is the primary focus, and you're starting to see this from the, the Urban League, National Urban League, you're starting to see this from organizations around the country where they're saying that this needs to be the primary focus for 2014. We need to raise the federal minimum wage. If that's going to be the case and that's going to lock people into entry-level jobs, and they're not going to be able to get into the secondary jobs, the tertiary jobs. They're not going to be able to climb the corporate ladder. They're not going to have a end goal that leads to more money, whether it's in management or in a skilled position where it's not management, but it's more money, it's advancement, it's something that you can do for 30 years, then I'm not for raising the minimum wage. Now, hear me and hear me well. I do not think that that means that the minimum wage in and of itself, is just fine. I don't think the minimum wage is just fine. I just don't think that it's the solution to this. If you're going to graduate that minimum wage, if you're going to allow it to grow incrementally over a period of time, so be it. I can understand that. I can understand that there's a need to recalibrate it. But I, I know how this works. This will become a partisan issue where the Republicans will fight against raising minimum wage and Democrats will sit there and try to call it a living wage when it's not a living wage. It's a minimum wage. There's a difference. You're not going to get to a living wage for people working at McDonald's for 20 hours a week. You're not going to get them to make $15 an hour because the business model is not made on that. Unless if you want your Big Macs to cost $9 a pop. I don't care. I don't eat this stuff. I can't even tell you the last time I had a Big Mac. I mean, good Lord, I think the last time I had a Big Mac, I was living in Pittsburgh again, but this time in the 1990s. And it might have been like 95. Ooh, wow. It's been 20 years since I've had a Big Mac. So that's on you. I'm not going to buy one at McDonald's. But if, if you want to mess up the business model like that, that's how McDonald's is going to survive. Your Big Mac is going to start costing 6 and $7 for the all two beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, on a sesame seed bun or, or, or special sauce on a sesame seed bun or whatever the ad was in the late 70s, early 80s. It tells you the power of advertising, but I still remember it. And I haven't had a Big Mac in over 20 years. But to my point, the, raising the minimum wage will become a partisan issue that will go to two extremes that make no sense. The Republican side, well, we need to keep it the way it is, which eh, I don't know if you need to keep it the way it is. And the Democratic side, which will say this is going to become a living wage. It needs to go up even higher, which no, that's not the case either. Minimum wage is supposed to be an entry-level job that prompts people to understand a business, understand a new work environment, and subsequently find ways to grow from that position into better positions where they can create a job. Not necessarily a job. It creates a career-building opportunity where that job is a portal to a career, maybe not at that employer, but to some employer where you can take those skills, whether it's customer service, public speaking. Heck, I, I tell people this all the time. They're like, Lenny, you're a great public speaker. You do radio. You do television. You give speeches. How did you learn to do that? Well, where I really got over my fear for public speaking I did it at a deli counter at Giant Eagle because you can't avoid people that are upset and nervous about a snowstorm coming when they need five pounds of chipped ham because there's going to be eight inches of snow in six hours and the deli counter is packed. You are going to interact with people. They're going to be a little anxious. They're going to be in a rush and either you're going to deal with them well or you're going to fail and they're going to tell you off and you're going to get in trouble and all that other jazz or you're just going to have a miserable day. I got over... My fear of doing that, making what I think it might have been like four dollars an hour, four twenty five, something absurd. It was in the early nineties, early to mid nineties. But that was a skill that I carry with me to this day. I can talk to people in blue jeans, I can talk to people in corporate suits, I can talk to people in a boardroom, I can talk to people at the local deli. 
No pun intended. That's what a minimum wage job is supposed to do. Help open career building opportunities, whether it's a skill that you translate into another job or it's a job that leads to another job that leads to another job that creates a career within that employer environment. That does not need to have a $20 an hour price tag attached to it. It just doesn't. That's not what that's supposed to be. So when I look at this argument, and I'm starting to see it on social media, you, you can go look on Twitter, look, go look on Facebook, go look at the, the mainstream media. I'm not going to use the Sarah Palin term, just not going to do it. No hopey changey and none of that lame, you know what, stuff that we're going to talk about. But if you go look at all of the reports out there, that is the momentum that is trying to build up as we go into 2014. They don't think that they can get immigration passed before the midterm elections. You see what Obamacare is doing. They're not going to bring back the right type of jobs that this economy desperately needs. So what do you go after? What do you fight for? Well, if you fight for increasing the minimum wage, it makes sense unless if you go to one of the two extremes, which is, is my fear. I think, and, and I'm going to caution both sides. I'm going to, I'm going to play, I'm going to play, I'm going to be altruistic. I'm going to play Joe altruism today. I'm not going to play Joe partisanship. And I usually am not a big partisan. I, I'm obviously Republican, but I don't, I don't do the super partisanship at the risk of, you know, not being objective or not being fair or not being just. So let, I think everybody that knows me knows that about me. So, even when I'm quote unquote Joe Partisan, I'm or Joe Partisanship or whatever you want to say, I'm still not, you know, off the rails crazy. Just don't do that. But I want to put the disclaimer out there that I'm gonna be even more altruistic than I normally am. So playing the role of Joe altruism, if you will, I go to the Republicans and I say, at some point in time you have to understand that until jobs come back. That makes sense. That built to careers. Maybe it does make sense to recalibrate the federal minimum wage. Even if it's not that much of an increase, you got to be able to recalibrate it just a little bit so it's in line with what is going on, what the American people are experiencing. There have been plenty of breaks that American businesses have been getting. And if and I know there will be some that will say it's a built-in tax. Well, you know what? I'd rather you raise the minimum wage and give money back to the American people through the work that they put in and then scale down a little bit on the profits while knowing that some of these same minimum wage workers are also consumers. I'd much rather do that than just take it and put it into a straight tax Increase taxes on businesses, prompt them to possibly want to leave an area, leave a state, and then the tax money is only going to go into people that are unemployed or people that need the, the help anyway and some type of welfare benefit. Let's re- if you're going to shift the money slightly, and I know people are like, well, that's, that's income redistribution. No, we're talking about people that are working. We're not talking about taking from the rich and giving to the poor. We're talking about how do you make sense, recalibrate a system that hasn't been calibrated in quite some time when it comes to minimum wage and still have that money circulate through the system without just snatching it from one to another? This is a lever that you do address. This is a lever where you say this hasn't been calibrated for quite some time. Can we make this make sense? While at the same time, Going after policies that create gateways to careers, not just these entry-level jobs. Do we create a level where the minimum wage at a federal clip can make sense, be closer to what the inflation rate has been over the last several years, while at the same time being something that will still encourage people to get the hell out of these jobs? Don't be comfortable. It's an introduction to an employer. It's an introduction to a new set of skills. It is not where you're supposed to be for 20 years. It's just not. And if you have to put together two or three minimum wage jobs to make it work, while you're there, pick up skills necessary to move forward. Like I said, there's nothing that I do that relates to cutting lunch meat anymore. I don't even eat chipped ham anymore. I don't even eat bologna anymore. 
I can't tell you the last time I had a hoagie or Subway sandwich, as folks would call it. Especially with ham on it. I haven't had ham in 20 years. But I do public speaking. I do interaction. I do customer service. And whether you believe it or not, and people don't believe it, politics and political matters truly, truly are customer relationship management type of activities. And they need to be more than they ever have been before. And the reason why we have failures in politics is because people are not very good at customer service. Maybe if they work jobs like this rather than going from law school straight to Congress or straight to the General Assembly. Anywho, (laughs) off the soapbox or off that soapbox to another soapbox. These jobs should help make more sense economically without being comfort zones, which goes back to the other side of this. Playing the role of Joel Altruism again. Again, want your feedback on Twitter or on Facebook. Democrats. Recalibrating minimum wage should not include going to thirteen, fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. Do not, do not, do not make this an argument about creating a living wage and making sure that all Americans are guaranteed a living wage. That is not how the American dream works. That's not how the American economy works. That's not how capitalism works. You're going to have some people that don't make as much as they would want to make. Lord knows I'm there right now myself does not mean that you should be comfortable with it, satisfied with it, anything else. It does not mean as well that you should exploit people that are not at those levels yet. So I'm not saying that either. I'm not saying that you need to have a a class that's exploited. That's not true. Is there going to be a class that would like to make more money? Is there going to be a class that's going to grow from being entry-level workers to being seasonal or, or seasoned, I should say, workers? to people that are management or highly experienced, to people that are running organizations or corporations and on through? Yes. And minimum wage is part of that. Now, can you recalibrate it and make it a little fair? Yes, you can. And again, fair is in quotation marks. And yes, yes, we can. Lord knows it's not a bumper sticker. But you can do that. But it does not mean that you automatically jump the gun and say, Everybody deserves a living wage. That statement may be true. Everybody may deserve a living wage, but does that mean that the American economy is supposed to build that into your job at McDonald's, your job stocking shelves? Is the American economy built or should it be built where that fits into every job that there is? Because if that's the case, then number one, you're watering down other types of jobs that provide value that now you're making on equal footing to flipping burgers, which starts getting into like a Soviet model of an economy, which we know how that worked out. We know what that did for for value, for quality, for morale, for the strength of a country overall over time. We saw what that did. So we know that there's some value in having the American capitalistic form of economy, form of a workforce, there's there's value in it. Now, can you tweak? Can you make better? Can you make it make sense? Yes. But just as I was talking from the conservative standpoint where you can't just go too far and say, don't raise minimum wage or better still, there should not be a minimum wage at all. Exploit the workers. That's the only way they're going to get ahead is, heck, if they don't want to be exploited, they'll do better. That doesn't really work. That doesn't really work in, in, in human nature because a lot of times when people have an advantage over somebody, they don't just exploit them to make them better. They exploit them until they're dead. We've seen that since the beginning of time. Different forms of slavery. Different forms of exploitation. You don't just exploit people until they say, you know what, I'm sick of being taken advantage of. I'm going to rise up. No, usually you exploit those people and you put your foot on their neck until they can't breathe. And then they're dead. Then you go get somebody else to exploit. That's how human nature is without certain confines. So you can't go to that regard. But at the same time, the other regards you can't go to, Democrats, and again, I'm giving you free advice. You cannot make this a crusade for a living wage. That's not going to work, nor should it work. Minimum wage is supposed to be a gateway, a gateway to new skills, New experiences, perhaps a new career, perhaps a new career. 
It's kind of like what we should do with apprentices again. We should have some type of apprentice program where people come in. There's an expectation you're not going to make that much money, but there's an there's a built-in expectation that you're going to learn something and that you can create a career with the experiences that you gain, whether it's in that realm of work or not. Again, heck, I've done heck, I worked for the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission holding a sign. I'm not going to go build a bridge anymore, but I learned certain things from that experience. That's what minimum wage jobs are supposed to do. That's what their value is. So if we are, and I I will end with this, if we are going to tweak the minimum wage, if we are going to mess with that going into 2014, if the Urban League, and if the NAACP, and if other Nonprofit organizations are going to jump on this as a cause and a crusade for 2014 for the midterm elections. I ask of you, do not go off the rails. Conservatives, I ask of you, at least consider it, considering that the numbers have not been recalibrated for inflation for a second. And good jobs are not coming back to this economy quite yet. And they may not come if we have a split Congress and President Obama still doing what he's been doing in the White House. Something has to change, but something sensible has to change when it comes to the minimum wage that we have on a federal level. Just my take on it. What's yours? You know where to find me on Twitter, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. On Facebook, tinyurl.com slash L-E-N-N-Y-P-A-G-E. Looking forward, as always, to talk to you on Thursday. In the meanwhile, you have a pleasant, pleasant, pleasant Wednesday. I love talking to you. I appreciate our friendship and our bond. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. TCNGB. Take care and God bless. Peace.